See, we need to find out if we're missing the crowning of the king and queen cats. I can't tell the difference between any of these cats, Paul. I don't know if who gets crowned is really meaningful. But I think it might be kind of fun for our viewers to see, you know, if... Oh, here we go. Uh, who, so who is now, this? this is, that's the King Boreas. He was just crowned. So that's the king of the Winter Carnival Festival in St. Paul. Now, is this a, is this a military job? Why does, he, why does he wear a military style uniform? Oh, man, you're, that's beyond my St. Paul knowledge. This is a real, real, real thing. Real, 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 real thing. None of you have the balls to stop. Stop this. Stop this. I've got plenty of time. I have nothing else going on today. We're in the wedge neighborhood right now. 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 Is there a, a stigma attached to being a cat breeder? I wonder if this episode is politically incorrect, Paula. Um. <laughs> I know. I know. Dog breeding is isn't that like a bad thing to be breeding uh, animals? I don't know. What's what I, do people say about these things? I think yeah. I think that there is some possible concern, but okay. are they're we promoting a bad thing. There aren't just breeds here. There are. Um, I don't I don't remember the term that they use but it was like there's there are prizes for non breeds of cats okay. as well. Okay, here we are on the Wedge Live podcast. I'm your host John Edwards. Uh, I'm joined by my co-host and lifestyle producer Paula Chesley. Hi everyone. Here in St. Paul at a cat show. What is the name of this cat show? It's called the St. Lee City Cat Show. It's part of the Winter Carnival, the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Okay, and I was asking you as we walked over to this side of the yeah, Convention Center yikes, just just coming in what, hot right away. Yeah, what are the political implications? I've done no research. I just showed up at the cat show and said, "Can so, we record video?" Let's, let's back it up a little bit. So we were gonna um, we were gonna record an interview and uh, go to the Palio Games, the friendly rivalry between Lowry Hill, Kenwood, and East Isles, and it was canceled. Uh, or yes. rather, so it's very cold. It's very cold today. Very, yeah, it is very cold, to be fair. And so that was postponed. And so we had to come up with a plan B for today. We're on a little bit of a time schedule. Uh, and I did think that the cat tour or the cat, um, not the cat tour, because that's your thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. That uh, the cat show would be an interesting thing. And so we are coming here with a neutral frame. We don't really know much about it. Um, and there are they are showing several breeds, but they are also showing uh, non-breeded cats. I don't know how to refer to that. I think they might call them house cats. We we've done no research. Zero research. So Paula's that big idea for this episode was to look at her clipboard and read off all the breed names. <laughs> It's like 36 breed names. I'm like, I don't know if that's going to work for a podcast, Paula. Well, and then also, like, for educational purposes, you know, then showing a picture of yeah. each of the different yeah. me, breeds. Uh, me as host and editor was going to insert pictures of all 50 breeds or whatever as she went along. I don't know if that's okay. good. Uh, okay, so podcasting. dear listener, just checking, you know, I feel like people can name maybe, like, 10 breeds of dogs off, mm -hmm. you know, just off the top of their head but how many cat breeds can you name uh persian which the one we just okay just the one we just saw got it uh, the garfield cat what's okay. that i don't is that a calico maybe tiger yeah. cat okay, I don't know. you have a cat paula i what, do have a cat is billy jean that's I cheating think, that's uh, cheating i think uh view our viewers of the youtube channel were delighted to see 11 hours of Billy Jean oh, uh, in front of the fireplace. That's my cat, yeah. What, what breed is Billy Jean? So, Billy Jean is a rag doll. Okay, there's a breed. Yeah, that is a breed. And if people are concerned about breeding cats, she was actually a retired breeder cat. And I got her from kind of a, a sketchy cattery. So, I kind of feel like I rescued her a little bit because that place folded pretty quickly after I got her. So, are we promoting an event that is bad for the world? Should we even be here? I'm, I, I don't get This is above my pay grade, these okay. questions. Paula, let's set our moral qualms aside okay. and try to have fun today. Okay, for sure. Okay, but 
don't nec- don't uh, participate. Maybe don't participate in this. Possibly, I don't know. They're letting us record here. Yeah, that's great. So maybe we can come back to that question. Like, should people participate at the end? Uh, or not? I feel like that's a thorny question. I'm not prepared to answer. Yeah, fair. We're just gonna ha- we're gonna try to have fun. But understand, as we do this, we're going to have some qualms, and we're not going to express them to you. Can I, yeah, can I read at least a few of the cat no. breed names? Find some interesting ones and okay. read them. So, um, there are apparently 12 Berman cats, B-I-R-M-A-N, and I don't know what that breed is at all. It's a long-haired specialty. It's what got one of the most entries, so I'm very curious about that. Um, there are seven exotic tabbies. Um... Um, there are three Norwegian forest cats. I kind of know what those are. They're big. Um, there is a, uh, a Havana brown. There is a Japanese bobtail. These are now short hair specialty. Um, and then there is a Tonkinese. There are five Tonkinese. And then there is one Somali cat, hmm. which I have never heard of. And I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Selkirk Rex. Wait, hold on a sec. Selkirk Rex long hair division but it's in the short hair egyptian mao yeah so see this is interesting where i think i think we should be i'm cutting i'm cutting half of those out (laughs) okay anyway so those those are some of the breeds that we had never heard of and maybe we'll learn a little bit today there's also people here selling cat uh, related items it looks like little little cat themed products uh maybe cat items for people and cat items for cats so we, maybe we'll talk to some vendors. We'll check it out, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think you mentioned to me this is like a cat beauty pageant. That, yeah, I did I did um, look at a video of people promoting it, and they said it was a cat beauty pageant. And before people say, wait, I thought this was a winter-themed miniseries of the podcast. Uh, it is affiliated with the St. Paul Winter Carnival, which is yeah. a great series of events. So still qualifies. Highly recommend, yeah. Mm-hmm. We get to be indoors. Maybe on a technicality, but whatever. In zero degree weather, we can be indoors and still do winter themed uh, uh, episodes. Yeah. We can do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's, you ready? Let's go check it out, yeah. Let's, let's go. Oh, wow. There's our first, those are our first cats. Hello. <laughs> Let's see. I want to go check this out. Can I ask who this is? Yes, this is Blizzard. Oh, hi, Blizzard. It's such a cutie. Can I pet Blizzard? Yes, oh, wow. Is this a Himalayan? No, Was this a Persian. It's oh, Persian. Oh, okay. More of a cool. dog face. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Such a softie. You, your this eyes. Can you? Maybe, yeah. I think we might have to show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so these are little Persians. <laughs> Okay, I'm like putting the microphone, like, say something. <laughs> say something. <laughs> oh my gosh, how soft. And this is Elizabeth. Uh, Kathy. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. both of these cats are in the competition? Yep, both of these are, yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how, do, we, we just got here, so how does it go? Oh, how goodness. How does the competition go? Well, you get judged by each of the um, judges in uh-huh. the four rings. They each have a number, and so they call up your number, and then they judge them against their color, and then if there's a boy or a girl, you know, uh-huh. and then... Um, uh, you know, they're sectioned off with um, long-haired, you yeah. know, uh-huh. uh, cats and then the short-haired breeds. And then they pick their top ten favorite cats. And then that's when you get called to the final if your number gets called. Then. So do you know if you're in the final? Uh, not yet. Okay. You just got judged. <laughs> How long have you been competing in uh, cat shows? About well, five years I have been. Okay, well. So just, you know, the local ones in town here. I've gone, you know... Um, Oh, oh I know she's tired. How did you get into it? I love cats. Okay. <laughs> I've always loved cats. I grew up with cats. And um, I had gotten a silver shaded Persian when I was in my 20s, and I just fell in love with the breed. And then, you know. What are the characteristics of the Persian breed? They're calm, they're loving, they love their human, so they'll pick their human and then they'll follow their human around. They've got like one person? (laughs) Not necessarily just one, but they they can pick a favorite. What would be your advice to someone coming to this cat show or any cat show for the first time as a spectator or also as a cat? uh, What is your title? What what do you call what you do? Uh, Professional uh, 
cat breeder. <laughs> okay, professional cat breeder. What would be your advice to someone coming to the cat show for the first time to, to enjoy themselves? Just give it a try, ask questions, um, ask others for help and advice. Uh, there's a lot of really nice people around here and you get to meet a lot of people. You, every cat show I do, I learn something new, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where to now? Should well, we I think we should go. Go see what they're showing? Yeah. <gasps> That's a rag doll for sure. So this woman is holding up a cat in kind of a banana-shaped position and um, giving some dialogue about it and then kind of showing the face. This Billie Jean would hate all of this, I feel like. But these cats have been apparently socialized to doing this since childhood. Short hair specialty, seventh best and sixth best. Hi, kitty. Hi, sweetie. Okay. Just, just creeping on the cats here. Did you ever have pets at all growing up, John? Uh, I had dogs occasionally. Okay. I, I, so I'm coming to this... Uh, People think you do a cat tour. You must know about cats. I don't know anything about cats. Well, maybe we'll learn a lot today. We've got some pretty cute cats coming in here. So already, people, I'm, I asked about the childhood cats thing because number 139 is um, just got some cute black and white spots. And uh, kind of reminds me of this cat I had when I was younger, which we called Baquita. Um, which means, like, in, Sp in Spanish, vaca means cow, and vaquita means little cow. So it's pretty cute. Were you uh, poking fun at this cat's weight? Why would you call... Uh... No, it's like the patterns, yeah. Okay. It's just, you pattern. know, kind of, yeah, spotted, spotted cow pattern. Yeah, super cute. Uh, again, with the state fair analogy, it reminds me of uh, people coming in from their farm and staying in RVs at the, uh, at the state fair. I wonder if people do that, if they bring their RV... And camp out in downtown St. Paul. Maybe we could ask some people exhibit. here. We could maybe we could talk to these people who are right next to us. I, I wonder from our, how far around people come to the cat, good question. the cat show. Where are you coming to us from? We're coming in from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh uh, wow! One and a half, five hour drive. Okay. What what is the longest distance you've traveled to go to a this cat our, show? This is our first show. Oh, first show. How's it been so far? It's been fun, exciting, um, something new, learning. I mean. You listen to the judges and stuff you're learning something almost every round wow so what are some of the things the judges say they're just kind of explaining the colors and the breeds and um, demeanors and what they're looking for when they inspect them okay oh they go so fast but when they're done and they go back and judge them they're explaining a lot of stuff of what they see in that few seconds that they actually spend with the cat oh we should and how much these judges can take in and uh, that short period of time Oh, very cool. So as someone new to the process, how do you even get started along this path? I have a wife and son that are interested okay. in it, and then they're the ones that did a lot of this research. Okay. Can you speak for them? Tell, tell us, how did they get you into this? Um, they were driving so far, and I just was, I'm more of the chauffeur in this. We're learning some very helpful things about the distribution of cat color and genes that we kind of came into the middle of unfortunately, but basically if there's a white gene, as far as I'm understanding it, if there's a white color gene in the cat, then if it's a weak gene, it will just be expressed just by m cats having mittens. And if it's a um, stronger gene, as the person said, then it will show up as having like a um, spine of white, just like this cat has here. Okay, spraying down the surface. Is she allergic? This cat is just four months old. She's born to be a star. Paula, I am being told by our producer here, our other producer, that uh, the table was wiped down with a cloth and then the judge blew her nose with it. Yes, I did. Yes, did I can confirm. Okay. Yes, I, in fact, also um, got, yeah. you know, gave some play-by-play -play of that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. You noticed it, too. Yeah. I, I didn't notice it at I all. I was wondering if she was allergic. This must be thrilling for our audience. All the footage that I'm going to cut out of the judge doing uh, who knows what. 
look at that table. look at that cat 139 like what is it doing right now it's got it's like it's just in a very okay oh <laughs> this cat <laughs> she's like have you done this before at all okay there we go i'm just i'm just super excited that we caught her blowing her nose on the cat disinfecting <laughs> rack <laughs> Okay, cutie. She didn't talk much about that cat, so that cat's going to get a participation prize is, or something. Is that an indication of a poor performer? You don't get much uh, commentary? I think so. You know, I think she was being generous, though. It's, it's an adorable cat. It is. It's really cute. All this judging... I don't, I don't think it's right to judge. No, I think it's just you just show their personalities. Here we go. All these cats are winners in my book. Yeah, for sure. We, we might want to go talk to people. Yeah. Oh, what a cutie. Okay, I don't want to. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, what's your name? Uh, I'm Thomas. Thomas, are you the one showing the cat? Yep. Okay, cool. And who's this? Uh, this is Beans. Beans? Mm-hmm. And how old is Beans? Uh, Beans is eight months old. Oh, wow. So kind of young. Mm -hmm. what, when do they say is the best time to show a cat? Because I was hearing that a lot of those cats were kind of younger. Um, there is a uh, required age limit. I believe it's like uh, seven or eight months that they have to be uh, in order to participate in the shows. Oh, so they can only, it's like zero to seven or eight months? Or they are like uh, minimum age seven to eight months? Minimum age is seven to eight months. Got or, it. Okay. Yeah. And then they can okay. show the rest of them. Okay. Okay. And so is Beans. What a cute little cat. Uh, so are there more, uh, like, do we call them purebred cats? I've never been to a cat show before. Yeah, we don't know what we're what talking about. What is the about? distinction between a cat who is, like, a specific breed and just, like, a, uh, this cat, for example? Okay, uh, so these cats, uh, they're just, uh, you know, they're barn cats. They go off and do what they want. They find someone, and then the kitten is uh -huh. born. Uh, purebreds, uh, they... Wait, wait, so you, I love how you describe that. Find someone, do what they want, and then the kittens are born? Yeah. yeah. Cat sex. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, um, and then purebreds. Uh, what they do is uh, they find two cats that are good, uh, usually the same breed or two different breeds depending on the breed, and then uh, they breed them together to try and get the special characteristics that a uh, certain breed needs. So that, uh, yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing uh, cat shows? Uh, I've been doing cat shows for about uh, four years. Four years, and you must like it. You keep doing it, right? I really enjoy cat shows, yes. Okay. What do you enjoy about it? Um, I enjoy just coming to the shows, seeing all the different cats, and just uh, seeing how my cat places amongst them all. Is it a co is it a competition thing for you? Do you get very competitive? Um, I, I do it more for the fun. Okay. Uh, at the end of the year, there is a rewards banquet, so I'm tr always trying to go for that number one spot if I can. Okay. What, what makes a good cat? Like, when you think of your cat and you look, look is it a, a male or female cat? Uh, he is a male. He. Okay. So when you look at him, what do you can see? We, can you pick him up? Oh yeah, sure. What do you see his strengths are? What are your cat's strengths? Okay. Um, and then, okay. Okay, and I. Um, he's uh, he, he's got really nice fur. Uh, judges usually look for that uh, okay. when they're looking for cats. Uh, they're clean. His uh, he's got good whiskers. His ears are clean. Uh, for a household, it really depends. For household pets, they uh, don't go off of uh, at any standards. Uh -huh. It's uh, just uh, what the judge likes about the cat. So. <laughs> So okay, uh, Paula, that was good work, Paula. <laughs> so their their fur, their their paws, their ears, uh, the, are their claws trimmed? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they look for in household pets. Okay, and so thinking again about your cat, what are the weaknesses? What are you going back after this cat show and you're going to say, we need to work on this for next time? Ooh, that's a tough one. He doesn't have that many. Let's really? see. Try to be objective. Pretty mischievous, oh. isn't he? Like very, very curious and interested. Yeah, in the world. he's very curious. I'm gonna, I I'm gonna say that his one weakness is he tries to get off the judging table often. Okay. So I'd say if we can, we're gonna try and uh, get him to have a little more self-control when being held. Did we ask you where you're from? We uh, didn't. No. I am. I'm just over the border in Wisconsin. Okay. Well, we've met another. We met another person from Wisconsin. How, how far do people come to do the cat show? Uh, I know some people that uh, have come all the way from Washington to get to a show that's in uh, wow. Minnesota and Wisconsin. Okay, N not this one. Not this one. Is there a bigger cat show? What's the big cat show in Minnesota? Ooh, I'd say that this is probably one of the bigger ones in Minnesota. Is there a big one in Wisconsin? Ooh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I usually go to uh, the smaller cat shows, uh, maybe 60 to 90 cats. Uh, so this is the only big one that I actually go to, probably 200 okay. to 300 cats here. 
Paula, these, these cats are fascinating. Oh my God. What's going on with these cats? I'm a little, here, let's, yeah, let's zoom in. Whoa. It's a little, what kind of cat are these? Like, I don't, I don't want to say creepy, but like a little bit. So we've got some white cats here and they look almost like a little bit like deer or something. And they've got these very pointy faces, which is kind of, um, and the big ears. What breed is this? We need to. I'm not even sure these are cats. They, yeah, they are because they're here. Are these wolves? We don't know. Can are these you, cougars? Yeah. Hi, cuties. Their ears are, each ear is just as big as its face almost. Mm. Yeah. I wonder if we could get someone around here to tell us. Who's responsible for yeah. these cats? Excuse me. You want me to open it up? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, yes. We'd love to see your cats. Okay, so you said they're color point short hairs. Yes. Okay. They're related to the Siamese if you're familiar with Oh, okay. Do they have an origin, like a geographic origin? Uh, they actually started in uh, England. Okay. Where they bred a Siamese to an American short hair. They're very which unique. Is, which is what yeah. gives them the lynx markings. Okay, okay, yeah. And how old are these cats? They are seven months old. Oh, wow. Okay. How long this have you... This is a chocolate torty lynx point. Mm -hmm. And that is a blue cream lynx point. Okay. And sorry, we didn't catch your name. I'm sorry, Jeff Phipps. And are you a, a breeder or do you... I am a registered breeder in CFA. Oh, okay. Cool. Under the name Jedi, Jedi Cat. Jedi Cat. Okay. As and where... Yes, of course. And where are you out of? Kansas City. Oh, wow. so you're sorry. coming to us from Kansas City. Yeah, I'm here every year. Oh, wow. I also serve as a master clerk for the show. How long have you been doing cat shows? Oh, God. Longer than I care to admit to. Uh, why have you Probably always... 15 years. Is this your... Are these your special... Uh, do you stick with this breed or you do... I also do Siamese. Okay. So what... Siamese and color point, as I said, they're, uh, they're related to one another. And uh, what got you into it? I, I bought a Siamese okay. and the breeder was very bright told me to come to a cat show to okay. pick up the cat oh, and i was stretch. and i was fascinated with the process and i never left so thinking about your cats what would you say their strengths are like what judge is going to take a look at this cat and say wow this cat is doing well, this really well first off in a show every cat is judged amongst the standard for their particular breed okay and and each judge determines which cat that's best meets that standard mm -hmm. Of course, I'm going to say they all meet the standard mm -hmm. as a breeder. So you wouldn't be willing to tell us what's what's your cat's weakness? Your cat has no weaknesses. Well, if I would say these two cats in particular, yeah, this one would be his coat. Her coat's kind of open, kind of fluffy. See that? Yeah. Okay. Whereas that that other girl has a closer line coat. And they're looking for the closer line coat. Over the open coat like that, yes. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, can we, either you or us, pick up one of them? Would they be... I would prefer not because they're a little frightened. For sure, I, I understand. Can. Yeah, you can, yeah. We just, we'd love to see them up close. <laughs> so how do your cats deal with the judging process? We've oh, seen the judge completely manhandling these cats. Do they, do they handle that well? It, it all depends on, on the animal. Uh, at the end of a two-day show, they kind of get tired. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. So, what are some of the things that you do to well, they, prepare your cat? For they start being in. in, the, um, in we the... start showing them at four months old. Okay. Which is, as you know, it's very young. Okay. Some of the types of things we do is introduce them to other cats in the household. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes the noises in the show hall will start with them, so we try to run a TV or a radio or something, okay. so that they become accustomed. That makes sense. To the noises that they may hear mm -hmm. in the show hall. Okay. So what, what, is, what are your cat's favorite TV show? Do, do you have a thing you play for them that's special? They don't watch. Oh, you mean, no, I just pick a, a station. And really? Play. Just random? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it could be talk radio. It could be music. It could be anything. Uh, well, yeah. Do you have anything else you want to let our listeners and viewers know? Come to our next cat show. Or when is that? It's here every year. Okay, come to this one in particular. Yep. Okay. I'm Lisa. Lisa, nice to meet you. And what kind of cat is this? He is a kitten. He's a Persian, a brown tabby Persian. Okay, how old is he? Five months. What's his name? 
Dillinger. We call him Dylan. Okay. How, how long have you been doing cat shows? Way too long. <laughs> okay, how did you get into it? Um, I got my first pedigree cat in, let's see, 1980. And decided to show, do some showing there. And then showed for a while, got out of it for a while. And kind of missed it with all the friends and the camaraderie, which is the most mm-hmm. fun part of it. And got back into it probably about 10 years ago. Okay. So you have friends, like you've made cat show friends? Yes. Yes. Say more about that. So other other people who are showing their cats? Correct. Okay. Correct. So meeting a lot of nice people from all over the country. Um, sometimes if you go to the international show, you'll meet people from all over the world. Oh. So it's, it's, it's fun. You go to international cool. shows? Well, the international shows are in the U.S. Okay. Um, but yes, people from overseas do come to the international how far, shows. How far is the farthest you've gone for a cat show? The farthest I've gone has been Matamoros, Pennsylvania, which is the, from what I'm told, is the last town in the northeast section of Pennsylvania, bordering New Jersey and New York. And when I was just about there, I saw a sign that said 75 miles to New York City. And I go, oh, my God, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Are you from Minnesota? I am from Wisconsin. So. Okay. okay. A lot of people from Wisconsin. I think that everyone we've talked to has been from Wisconsin, right? That's good, then. Uh, and nice a guy from Kansas here. City. Yes, yeah, so there's people from all over the country here. Yeah. Um, Donna's not here. She's from Colorado. There's people from all over the country. Would you be willing to pick up little Don? It's Dylan. Donovan. Dylan. Dylan. Yeah, Dylan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe show him to our viewers here. Okay. So talk, let's talk about Dylan. Mm-hmm. So thinking from a judge's perspective, what are your cat's strengths? Uh, his strengths is, well, they work on the head. The head is a major part of it. You've got to have uh, a round head. So they kind of go like this if you watch them judging to make sure that they're round. Okay. Small little ears down the side. Uh, big Open oh, eyes, yeah. which he's yeah. not opening them that much right now because he's just coming off a nap. Oh. Um, they have to have good point color. He's a mackerel tabby, so he needs yeah. to have the stripes going down the body as opposed to a classic tabby that's got the bullseyes and the bracelets on it. Settle down. Uh, and they have to be <laughs> short and cobby, which he is. He's compact. And you have to have a short tail. Should come up to no further than the shoulders on him. So... Um, he's very good representation of the breed at this point. He's still pretty young, five months old. They don't fully mature until they're probably about two. Not that he's going to necessarily get that big, but he'll broaden out, and his head has got to get bigger, and um, his ears will come down, and he will be, I think, a nice a nice kitty. Do you have any other comments you want to say to our listeners and viewers? I'd say, well, if there's any shows in the area, this is a CFA show, Cat Fancy Association, the oldest organization of the Cat Fancy, uh, 1906. So uh, comparable to AKC, which a lot of people know about dogs. And come out and visit a cat show. Uh, We have pedigreed cats. We also have um, household cats. And Lisa next door has a Norwegian forest cat that she's showing in the household pet um, category that came from, um, unfortunately, a, a breeder of Norwegian forest cats passed away. And so her cats went into rescue, and she rescued one of their cats. So um, there's something you don't think you have to have a pedigree cat. Uh-huh. For CFA, you just cannot declaw. Uh-huh. You do not cannot claw. Clawing. And there's a lot of programs within CFA on the website that you can go on and see. Uh, we have a newbie program for uh, people who are just coming into the fancy. And so just you know, see if you're interested. Who are Hi, you? my name's Anna. Okay, and who is this? This is Jeff, and he is a five-month-old Dove and Rex. Okay, so so many new breeds for me. So, what are the qualities of a Dove and Rex? So, as you can see, you can kind of tell he has like curly, wavy fur, and he has the really big ears and the big eyes, and. Um, you know, most cats have like three layers of hair, but he just has the one layer. So it's Does that make him hypoallergenic? For the most part, yeah. So okay. um, he's, he does really well with people with allergies, and that's why I got him. Plus, he doesn't shed. Are you allergic? Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. So how is it for you to be at a cat show? <laughs> I've, I've prepared well with taking my um, allergy meds. meds. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. How, okay. how far have you come to be here today? Oh, just Invergrove Heights. How long have you been doing cat shows? This is 
Oh, my new first, exhibitor. Yeah, my first cat show that I've ever been to. How's, how's the experience been for you? <laughs> great, great. Um, you know, obviously the first time showing as well. But yeah, I never really knew that cat shows existed. And then my friend sent me a link. And next thing you know, I'm signing up for this cat show. And I didn't really know what I was getting into. <laughs> Would you be willing to like um, pick him up for our listeners and viewers? Okay, let's do it. Little Jeff. I know it's yeah it's because you're because it's your first time yeah okay what a sweetie yeah so he's got that can I pet him a little bit okay hi cutie so you're gonna come back and do more cat shows I don't know I don't it's been fun so far so we'll see are you yeah. gonna make this your life no <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners this cat that we're walking up to has seven medals my name is Donna Waskowitz. Okay. And I have a uh, posh Persian. You have uh, posh. That's what the name of my cat, oh, Cattery is, okay. is posh Persian. Posh Persian. And where is that? And that's in Colorado. Oh, so you're from Colorado. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, again, he is a grand champion. Do, can, we, can, we, can we take him out at all? Absolutely. Can we see him? Certainly. Oh, hi, Fluffy. Hi, Floof. Okay. Okay. Weighs almost 13 pounds, which is a pretty good size for a Persian. Okay. Um, so w- cute. Yes. We are here working on points for a regional is why we are still showing. Because a lot of people, once you grand them, then you either have to go to the next step. Which is oh, oh, no. Cat in the soup. Sorry, I'm no, using all these Kleenexes. Right. <laughs> well, I apologize about that. Okay. Yeah, I think the cat fell in the soup. I'm going to take these. I'm going to go find a waste basket, okay? Okay. Can we just do a little debrief after that, John? <laughs> what about it? <laughs> that you dropped the cat in the soup. I didn't how drop I remember. it. I didn't drop it. it do not. Like you no. dropped the cat in the soup, and then the cat That's knocked over the soda, and it turned happened. into a whole big thing. <laughs> but it did. But yeah, I just I do need to process a little bit. Uh, there's, uh, there's a cat. <laughs> wait, John, I'm dead serious. Uh, do you know? Oh wait, we can. Okay. Look at this. Okay. Now this is a big cat, so I would say this is either a Maine Coon or Norwegian Forest cat, or a house cat. But I think it's probably a little too big this to be a house cat. cat's drawing a crowd. Yeah. Okay, so you need to debrief. I yeah. Do you feel bad? Well, I mean, yeah, that was a grand champion. And mm. during the interview... You spilled soup all I over... I did not! Stop! You spilled soup Stop all over this grand champion putting, no, cat. No, I did not. You did. You did. No. <laughs> Stop. Okay. That cat's career is over. Go to YouTube. They're not Go gonna to get, YouTube. They're not going to get the points <laughs> for the grand championship because you spilled soup all and over this champion cat. Go to YouTube to see... <laughs> That I did not, in fact, do that. that. Soda. I don't know if soda is good for the coat. This is total fake news, John. Um, Yeah, so, but, you know, the woman was very gracious, but she did seem a bit uh, stressed afterward, which totally makes sense. Yeah, we're... Because her champion cat just had a little bit of soda on its tail. We show up, put a camera and mics in her face, (laughs) and she drops her cat in the soup. Yeah. Also, she was eating lunch as we come by. I felt bad. Uh, They're both eating lunch. But it'll be it'll be okay. It, it'll be fine. She'll just have to clean her little cur- her skirt the tail. on the yeah. table, and yeah. uh, I think the cat was unscathed. Yeah, I think so. It handled it pretty well. Just literally like a champ. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. I'm I'm done with processing. Thanks. How long have you been doing cat shows? Since 2019. And how did you get into it? Uh, 2018. I came to the cat show here and got adopted by him. Okay. Three weeks prior, my Maine Coon mix passed away. So, so is this a Maine Coon? Yes. Okay. I so thought you, it, yeah. you acquired this cat at a cat show? Yeah, here. Is that co- a common thing? You come to the cat show and you come home with a cat? Yeah. Really? So cat, cats are for sale at the cat shows? Some of them are, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And, you know, just come with a good big pocketbook. 
So your cat was drawing a crowd over there. Uh, does, does, what, what is your cat's name? Spirit Walker William. Spirit Walker William. Oh, it, wow. That's Spirit a great Wa name for a cat. Does Spirit Walker William draw a crowd wherever they Everywhere go? Everywhere he goes. He's also the 2019 and the 2020 King Cat. King? What is the oh, King wow. Cat? Oh, wow. That's when the royal family comes in and one male and one female is crowned at this cat show. They're going to be oh. doing it in just a little bit, right? Okay. Yeah. But they'll have a big announcement, right? We don't oh, want to miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So big. is he in the running for this year's title? I have not a clue. Uh, so what do you get out of this? What is in it for you to be here showing your cat? Breaking rights. Can we take him out? And oh, sure. By the way, what's your name? We didn't catch that. Anthony. Oh, what a what a big sweetie. Wow. So how how many pounds is he? He's over 20. Yeah. Can see that because he's a big, he's a big mm -hmm. little boy. Yes. Oh, what a sweetie. Yeah. Oh, there's the microphone. Yeah. Very curious. So, about. where do you hail from? St. Paul. And so, what does Spirit Walker William like? What's his personality? Like, what does he like to do? He likes to snuggle. Really? And he likes to play floor hockey and he brings his toys, drops it by feet goes in the next room, looks at me, and goes, throw it again, Daddy. Mm. <laughs> okay. I love that. Can I try holding him, or that be? Well, we'll see. Okay. Okay. Back. okay. Be careful, Paula. The last cat you handled, <laughs> you spilled soup all over. That didn't happen. <laughs> you, you, that didn't happen. What a sweetie. Okay. Yeah, you do that, you pay for the cleaning bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mister. I think Spirit Walker William has a pretty good booth because they've got a handout here, and they also have candy. Spirit Walker William uh, signs his headshots here at the cat show. Look at that. That's pretty cute. Wow. Celebrity cat. For sure. I picked her up on a farm. And she had one heck of a glow up. Because she was really? not as good looking when I grabbed her as a kitten. Did you have to, like, clean her up, give her a bath? I had to give her a couple baths, baths this week. Yesterday she came in looking all greasy, and which I didn't know that something happened Friday night when I wasn't home. She decided oh, wow. to run around in some cooking spray. And my dad decided to go to bed without telling me until Saturday came around. And I picked her up. I'm like, why do you feel weird? So, that's not a good thing to do before oh, a cat show. No. How no. long have you been doing cat shows? This is my first one, actually. This is my first one. And how's it going for you? It's going good. I'm learning a lot of things. Um, it's different than doing dog shows. Do you, have you done dog shows? I, do do I show dogs. I have three border collies. So, I do a show in like agility rally, also confirmation. So, I want a different aspect. And since I've always wanted to go to a cat show, I thought I'd just one-up myself and do a cat show. So your, it's your first cat show. What is the memory from this weekend you will take with you the rest of your life? I would say how friendly everyone is. I love That's what how, we've heard. Yeah, I love how everyone is so open to helping newbies and how much the judge, judges also talk about the cats that they are looking at at the moment. Um, and it's different having a crowd always walking around and they want to like know a little bit more about your cat or get up a little bit closer. Um, not exactly the same at the dog shows. Mm, but yeah. it's, they, it is set up differently for dog shows. What kind of feedback have you gotten about Joey from the judges? Anything to improve aside from the greasy, the greasiness? Yeah, her coat's better now. Um, <laughs> did they? Did you get some comments about the greasiness? I did get some comments. Oh about the shoot! I'm like, I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't know. Um, well, she she doesn't really play with the toys, the wands, and so if they, she would do more play with the wands when the judges are trying to get them to react to it, that would definitely help her improve. No. Do the judges judge on playfulness? Well, they judge on their reaction. So their reaction to toys, reaction to touch, sounds, from what I've noticed. Which, you know, good thing to notice. I didn't really know that until I got here. So she's not really much of a wand player. She's always been, you know, a little mouse, and that's good. Do you do um, tricks and training with Joey as well? 
a little bit. I haven't done as much as I'd like to with her. I've been really focusing on getting some things trained with my dogs for the last few months. Feels like the cats are taking second uh, backseat to the dogs with you. I've had cats my whole life, every single day of my life. I've had dogs for half my life, but I purposely started, I purposely got dogs because I wanted to show. I started in 4-H and I wanted to show dogs. And I am trying to get more interactive with cats. You know, there's not as much stuff to do around here with cats as there is dogs. But I'm hoping to help by being here to improve the 4-H cat project program. Oh, awesome. Because I would like it if we can get more kids to join, like want to do this. What is the what is the 4-H cat project program? Well, unlike the dog project, um, cat project, they don't have... They don't really have anything going on. You know, once a year they get to make a poster board about in, with information about whatever they want for cats. And dogs, they have the option of dog bowl. They have the option um, to train their dog and do all these outings with their dog. But they don't have the same thing with cats. So I'm hoping that I can put the word out there that, hey, if anyone's interested in a cat show, how about we start doing um, these get-togethers where you learn about what judges are looking for in cats for their appearance, their health, um, their reaction to things, and then teach them on how to get their cats show ready, like teach them on how to do outings with their cats, of other people picking up the cats, how to keep their ears clean, um, nails trimmed. So I would like to get kids to become more involved with possibly cat shows. Oh, oh you go, gotta go? Go, go. Okay. Oh. Oh, hey, congratulations. So the cat just got a final. Oh, no, do your thing. Okay, let's just check out the cat. Okay, what a sweetie. Good luck. Best of luck, Joey. Best of luck. Yes. yes. Could, we, could we talk to you about your cat? Okay. Now, what kind of cat is this? Okay. And what's your name? Laura Gregory. Okay. Oh, okay. Florida. The furthest, the furthest so far. <laughs> this is quite a time to be in Minnesota from Florida, right? Yes. It's, oh. it's very cold. Do you even have... Oh, it's freezing. <laughs> yes, it's deadly. Do you even have like a jacket that prepares you for this kind <laughs> of cold? I do actually have a winter coat. <laughs> <laughs> we don't wear it in Florida. Uh, but just, I have Just for traveling, traveling because oh we travel. Uh, yeah. Do you go to a lot of cat shows far away from home? Yes. Uh, how, been... how many in a year do you go that are... Right state. now, I'm traveling every weekend. Wow. We were in Cleveland last weekend. We were in Vermont two weeks ago, so I'm using with, my coat with, with this, cat. this cat. With cat. Yes. And, okay, what's this cat's name? This is Rum Gully's Iceman of Ragtime Cats. We call him Icy. Be- oh very gosh, beautiful. Beauty. Yes. And British short hair. And do British short hairs have that particular kind of face? British short hairs are very round in the standard. They're okay. Board rounds in the standard like 30 times. So they have the rounded face, rounded ear tips, rounded tail tip. Oh, wow. This is just like a little mini polar bear. Yeah, they're very cuddly. To my untrained eye, this is a beautiful, wonderful cat. But I don't know, is this a good cat? It's a very good cat. Is it an award-winning cat? They're very sweet. Yes, he took Best Kitten in one of the rings. How old is he? He's seven months. So that's still He's considered a kitten. kitten. Okay. This is his last kitten show. Next week, he'll be competing for grand champion points. And do, do you already have a cat show lined up for him? We're going to take a break next weekend, and then we're going to start the following weekend. So the okay. last grand champion we talked to, Paula, like, spill, <laughs> spilled soup that. all over. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the lady was eating lunch, and uh, I think she dropped her cat near the soup, and then the soda spilled. It was a big thing. So that would I'm, be a nightmare with a white cat. Yeah. <laughs> here. Okay. So just be okay. careful of Paula. <laughs> what and say more about this cat's personality. They're very sweet cats. They're they're mostly laid back. I mean, he's very active to play with. I pull out the toys and you see he's very active. But otherwise, he's pretty laid back. Very affectionate. He's bonded with me very well. Do you have mini cats or are you a ragamuffin cats? Okay. So are you a, a breeder? I'm a breeder. Of ragamuffin cats. Of ragamuffin cats. I'm also a, a long-haired hair. judge for oh. CFA, and I'm working on my short hairs. Oh, wow. So th- to work on the short hair part of our judging, we need to show different short hair breeds. So that's why I have this cat. Well, you have so much information. Like, Would you care to share an interesting fact or tidbit with our listeners that you think that they might not know about cats? 
What, what do people find fascinating about cat shows when you there? You must have people in your life who have no idea about this lifestyle. I think people find it interesting that there's so many different breeds. I mean, they're just not aware that there are all these different breeds. Do judges look uh, well on a cat who plays with the wand? That's something we just heard. It's not a requirement that the cat plays, but it never hurts because you're trying to look at the, it, it helps them open the eye and see the eye aperture. It gives them an opportunity to maybe turn the face and see the profile. So it certainly helps the cat show itself off. Very cool. Well, anything else you'd like to tell our listeners and viewers? I think it's just something that, that um, is a really fun hobby for people um, to come out and try it. People don't realize that we have a household pet class and that you can bring your household pet out and show your, your pet. And so that's a fun class to come and learn how to show your cat. And a lot of people, I started in household pets and then decided to get a pedigree cat and, and move forward. So how long have you been doing this for? 23 years. What a beautiful cat. I, I, can I pick favorites? Like, I think so far this is kind of my favorite. He's been very, very popular. Look at, yeah, he's just he's so cute. Is, is he on Instagram at all? No, he's not, but he, okay. could, he probably could be. John, you are making me nervous. Can I just say, like, with your telling everybody, like, fake news about how I put this cat in some soup? <laughs> like, it's not true. Um, but like you're actually making the people a little nervous. Like, did you see that woman? Like, she was like, "Get away, girl." Yeah, she's like, I'd have to uh, dry clean my cat or something. Should we go check out more cats? Do you? Should think? we look at the vendors? We haven't talked to any like cat specific vendors. I kind Maybe of, there's an interesting I, product we can sure, talk about. yeah. But if not, then we need to come back to the cats. Okay, we are here with Fuzzbutt Boutique. So my What's your name? My name is Kylie. Uh, is this your first time here at the cat show? No, I came last year okay, for the first last time. Last year was your first time? Yep. Are you doing good business? Yes. Okay, what, what is your most popular cat-themed item here at the cat show? So, if you've been seeing the giant plushies, those came from me. Okay, let's. can so we have a giant us, plushie yeah, here? Yes. This is for humans to yes, use? Yes, okay. this is for humans. Um, but Fuzzba Boutique originally started out with handmade products. So that's the majority of our products is handmade uh, cat toys. We've got little F-bombs this weekend we oh, made. Oh, F-bombs. Yep. What, what is the idea behind the F-bomb? Is there something in it? It's just a catnip felt toy. Okay. So they just come in fun shapes. We've got a dead fish. We've got soot sprays really popular for the anime crowd. Um, different things like that. We've also got fun cat butt coasters and... So the products are homemade, yep, many of them? Everything is handmade except for the plushies. Okay. Very cool. And who, who makes them? Like local vendors? Nope. So it's all designed by me. Um, so I make them. I have my mom help me. I you have, make them. Yeah. That's amazing. So I did do all make, the screen Did you make that? Those so all these are made by me or one of the people that I have uh, trained to make them. Wow. Wow. So yeah, I do all the screen printing for all the clothing. So we have Cats Not Kids t-shirts, we have a Cat Dad hoodie, we have Cat Mom hoodies, we've got... Really? You screen printed all the clothing here? All too? the clothing is yeah, hand screen printed how by big, me. How big of a, like, do you have like a, a warehouse? Uh, this is all in my basement. All in your basement? Yeah. Okay, is it getting crowded? Uh, yes, I luckily have two rooms in my basement to work with. So I have a sewing room and then I have a screen printing room. Okay. What is your favorite product to make? To make? I would say it's probably the catnip pickles. Let's go check those out. out. So this is a catnip pickle. Okay. And why do you like it? <laughs> the the texture of the material is super fun because it's got nice little bumps on it and super smooth. So you just sew it up, we fill it, we line it with catnip, and then we put polyfill and catnip inside to make it stuffy, and then we hand stitch it closed. How much are they? Uh, the medium ones are nine. I think I might have to get one. <laughs> Impulse buy here. Right? Do you, it's the play on the, the cucumber videos. Uh, the cucumber videos? Oh, this, the, is cats that, the that cats gets, get gets really scared, scared from the cucumbers. So people, oh. yeah. So people kind of put cucumbers yep. behind cats either when they're eating or yep. not looking or something. And then the cats get really scared. scared presumably because think, they think they're snakes. Right? So yep. before we make fun of cats too much, I think I would be scared if someone left a cucumber on the floor. That's very <laughs> this is true. a weird thing to find on the floor, right? This is very, very true. So cats... It's not, it's okay yeah. to be scared of the cucumber. What are some of your most popular items? Um, our most popular item for like a clothing is going to be our fluffy, you, you fluffy, fluff t-shirt. Where's a cat let's, flicking you let's off? Go check that out. So it's right up there. 
Oh, so. Oh, fluff you, you fluff and fluff. Do we see that video? It says, fluff you, you fluffing fluff. Maybe we have one. Oh, here we go. Check this out. Okay, so it says, fluff you, you fluffing fluff. And then the cat's got a middle finger. Yep. Can I do that? <laughs> it's okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And how much does this go for? Our t-shirts are twenty-five. Okay. Very cool. This, is a, this feels like it's probably a thriving business for you, right? Yes. Yeah. I actually managed to go full time last March for oh, myself. Wow. Yep. When so, did you start it? Uh, we will be five years old in February. Very cool. Yep. So yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Do you have a website to plug? Are you doing yes. a lot of business online, or you do sell most of your stuff in person? So I do a lot of in-person shows. We're starting to get better with our online traction. We do have a website. It's me, fuzzbyboutique.com. Okay. okay I love it. Fuzzbyboutique.com. Well, I'm going to buy one of these pickles for my cat, Billie Jean. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to do the transaction now? Let's do it. Okay. Rarely do you see shopping on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take, um, do the colors matter? So do you want the light green or the dark green? It's really a preference. Okay. I'll take the light green. Okay. It's me, 971. Okay. Paula is buying a uh, catnip uh, cucumber <laughs> pickle. You want to bake for that? I'm good, thanks. Okay. Okay. Well, you completed your transaction? I'm pretty excited, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for stopping. Okay, so we got all these pictures of cats. THC, THC sold here. This doesn't even seem all that cat themed. Well, not really, huh? <laughs> it's just like animal themed. Uh, where's the vendor? Where's the vendor? Mood rings. Wow, bringing it back. Is there a vendor here in this booth? Are you the vendor? Yep. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, what, so. what are the regulations around selling THC at a cat show? Are there specific <laughs> regulations around that? I just know the Minnesota law, you can only sell a certain amount milligrams right yep yep okay i think you know it's cat shows in minnesota so you know this, this is i put it all on my list that we way i was could have said, i was no, actually i was thinking that it might have been for cats which is why i was interested in THC for over. cats is that yeah. what you thought we were walking into <laughs> yeah i mean there's you know there's cbd for cats and dogs yeah. now and actually i bought some cbd from a lady down there who's got stuff for animals <laughs> really hmm. cbd for animals yep Okay, there you go. Maybe we should yeah. check that out too. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Can we just get a visual of this? Is this THC? No, it's just catnip. Yeah. Meowawana. Yeah. You know, for Mike Norton. See, we need to find out if we're missing the crowning of the king and queen cats. I can't tell the difference between any of these cats, Paula. I don't know if who gets crowned is really meaningful. But I think it might be kind of fun for our viewers to see, you know, if. Oh, here we go. Oh. Uh, who, so who now is this? this is that's the King Boreas. He was just crowned. So that's the king of the Winter Carnival Festival in Saint Paul. Now is this a, is this a military job? Why does he Why does he wear a military style uniform? Oh man, you're that's beyond my Saint Paul knowledge. I will say, see, there's there's a lot of people here that have special. So we've got some guy wearing a Prince jacket that says Wind? Prince of the West Wind. Yeah. And then there's a royal guard, a couple people with royal guard, and then there's the, um, the, the, I don't know if she's a queen or the princess, the one wearing the white fur coat. Yeah. And I, I do, I, I read, oh, there we go. I read in the St. Paul Pioneer Press that she got into the competition because she was feeling lonely and wanting to stave off feelings of isolation. Yeah. There's a lot about uh, like Minnesota and St. Paul culture I don't understand. That's fair. Would you be willing to speak about your cat for a Absolutely, podcast? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Come on. Tell us uh, who you are. Uh, I'm Cat. <laughs> okay. Which and is funny because we're at a cat show. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. I wasn't going to say anything, but, uh, and who is your cat? This is Momotaro. His Momotaro. name means um, Peach Baby in Japanese. And are you showing your cat here at the Yes. Cat? So I, we are showing in the household. Um, so, and this is also our first year here. So this is our first competition and uh, he placed, the highest placement he got was third place. So that was really good. <laughs> Um, we have, I think, five other ribbons right now. 
It looks like we have other guests here. Thank you for showing us your yes, cat. Uh, thank you. Would you like to pet him? Yes, I would. He has what's called a cotton candy coat. So that's what is so soft about it. It was uh, nice to meet you yeah. and your cat. Thank, thank you. you. You too. So, um, yeah. Well, this oh this is gosh, a big deal, Paula. Oh, we, how's it going, everyone? Okay, first of all, we'll have you all introduce yourselves. So we're the Wedge Live podcast. We're from Minneapolis. So um, I will say that we are not totally familiar with the St. Paul lore. A little bit, though. But yeah, tell me about yourselves, who you are. Well, I'll let them introduce themselves. I'm L. Rhodes, Sergeant of the Guard. Sergeant of the Guard. So what does that mean? Uh, so, well, that involves the whole <laughs> description of the story. But uh, the royal family consists of King Boreas and his four brothers who represent the winds, north, south, east, and west. And they each have, a, well, there's Aurora, Queen of Snows, and then four princesses, and then the royal guard that protects the whole royal family. So you are protecting the royal family. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, next we have... Yeah, party. Hi, my name is Dee Barrett, and I'm the 2023 West Wind Princess. West Wind Princess? Yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, my name is Mike Cummings. I am the 2023 Zephyrus, uh, brother to King Boreas, so the West Wind. You're Prince of the West Prince Wind. Prince of the West Wind, correct. Okay, great. And then... My name is Gordon Carney, and I am uh, the South Wind Guard. Okay. My name is Jocelyn O'Neill, and I am the South Wind Princess, and I am accompanied by... I'm Dennis Bow, the South Wind Prince. Okay, and then we have... I am Liv Swenson, and I am Aurora Queen of the Snows. Yeah, I'm Leo Lewis. I'm King Boreas. Okay. I'm the head of the royal family, and we've got some guards as well as my brothers. I have two brothers here, two are, who are out there looking at cats. Okay. We're so happy to be here. Yeah. We're here to kind of look at where, where the champions are. Okay, so you're out and about mingling with the cats? Yes, yeah. yes. Have you seen some that you've liked so far? You know what? They all are cute. Let's put Aren't it that they, way. though? Yes, they are. So do you, have a, do you have a role here? Do you crown the king cat? You know what? I'm going to make that a secret. You'll have to wait and see. When is it happening? We need to know. Well, we won't be here long, okay, but okay. you'll have to wait. Okay. I don't know about you, John, but like, I got a little like nervous in the presence of all that royalty. Like, I didn't really know what questions did, to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't... I, I didn't want to be insulting and make fun of the thing that they're doing. Because I don't, I have no concept of how seriously they take it. And therefore, I can't gauge how seriously I should be taking it. That's and I fair. don't know what any of it means. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to insult their culture. The St. Paul culture? Like, honestly, as someone who used to live in St. Paul as a child, I feel a little starstruck by all the royalty. So do you know what any of that is about? I definitely know what King Boreas is, but like I, I had forgotten the winds part, the, that the Vulcans are part of this whole thing too. The what? The Vulcans. Like the Star Trek Vulcans? <laughs> I don't, they, they like wear red and they have, they kind of look like f firemen a little bit. Like they have a big truck. The Vulcans? Yes, the Vulcans. Not, yeah. not the Star Trek Vulcans. No, like, I don't know what else to say about it. How do you, I was going to ask, how do you even get uh, get into this? It's weirder than the cat shows and is the whole king and queen <laughs> and thing. Then, and then there's also, um, there's the medallion hunt. So there's a lot of lore. My name's Joel Olson. And where are you coming to us from? New Brighton. Is this a Bengal? Is that right? Yep, yep. This, okay. is, this is Bam Bam, the Bengal. Hey, He's three wow. years old. He's about Look 15 pounds. Okay. He's got these rosettes on him, Very they dramatic. call them, which are really pretty. Wow, and he's so calm. So he's really calm after being here all weekend. He's kind of gotten used to the situation. But at home, he likes to, he's pretty energetic. He likes to run around, play with his sister. What's his personality? Oh, he's really playful. He likes to uh, dig in the, jump in the toilet. And wants to, yeah, when you try to go sit down on the, on the, in the bathroom, you got to be quick, because otherwise they'll jump behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. T tell us the story behind this coat. How, yeah. how does this happen? Yeah. So they uh, originally were bred with an Asian leopard cat. Okay. And uh, so that's why, like when I was here five for five years ago, they weren't a full mm -hmm. member of the. This is run by ACFA, I think is the name of the organization. And uh, so they all have, you know, kind of like you hear in for dog shows. I think it's called the American Kettle Club Kettle right. Club, the AKC. So they have breed standards like that, and 
So Bengals weren't in it the first year because they were they thought they were too wild. But now they've been bred so many generations down from the original Asian leopard cat that uh, they're totally domestic. So it's a it's a normal cat. Is the Asian leopard cat a wild cat? Yeah, that's something that's out in the I'm not sure what country Asia somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's a wild animal, and so then they bred it to a domestic cat to come up with the to come up with these jaguar type spots on here. Oh wait. I think they're, John, look, they're lining up, so I think this is a thing that's happening now. Look at that. No, it's definitely, okay, they're getting ready. I think we should stand right here. So now it's like the king and queen cat. They're cleaning the cages. Yeah, cleaning the cages, but still the cats presumably smell the scents. If you're the royalty of the Winter Carnival, my question is, how many of these random events do you have to show up at? I mean, what what else you got going on, right? Why else? Why else do you try to be king, king and queen? Okay. One. One forty-five and, and one sixty-five. This is the moment wow. we've been waiting for all day, Paula. I, it's true. This it's is what true. we paid twenty-five dollars to come see. It's true. I thought that they might have like several cats come over and then you know, select the king and queen out of those. But of I feel like this is probably a little more humane. Okay, here we go. Okay, so, ooh. See, I, I couldn't have... These wouldn't be my king and queen cats. I'm just, you know, no, nothing against them. Did we meet but either of these cats today? We didn't. Oh, look at that cat back, though. That's pretty impressive. It's a very skinny cat. It's like, it's... Look at it. It's doing yoga over there. Doing a little twist. It's so unimpressed that it is king or queen it's just licking itself like f you humans i'm gonna do me okay so a crowd is starting to develop and form and we've got the royalty off to the right that are just waiting to be ushered in with the guards of the guard. So there's the royal guard. There's the royalty and then there are all the Balkans. like an actual pageant wave going on. Oh, then there's Klondike Kate. That's our King Boreas. Paula, can you feel the tension? I, yeah, I really can. Okay, 
There's a, a larger crowd now forming. Queen of the cats, okay. Okay. Everyone is so quiet. It's very solemn. Okay, there we go. The highlight of your life of which you have nine. Congratulations on being named the Queen Eli. <laughs> okay. Oh, the cat gets oh a hat. Oh my gosh. They put a hat on the that cat. That is pretty cute. Cat gets a cape. Yep, it gets a little cape. I don't think the a cat likes Saint it. Little St. Paul winter cape. Oh my gosh. Is that uh. not adorable? well-behaved cat. <laughs> Surprisingly well-behaved. Yes, very yeah. good. Just kind of chilling on that table, you know? Okay, this is the king of the cats. The of your life, of which you have nine. Congratulations on being named the king of Okay, this is the king of the cats. We don't know, again, we don't know what breed if any these cats are are these just the the household cats or are they all the cats oh it's just the, okay so these are the household cats that get the queen and the king yes so it's not the the pure breeds oh it's kind of slender so oh very stately yes Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just got his little cape and then he was kind of trying to scratch for some toys. Oh, excellent. So each cat gets a rosette, black, and a medallion, along with a knighting certificate and a medal from Warriors Fest 86. They're talking about the prizes the cats get. Okay, that was the ceremony. Wow. How do you? What do you think, John? What do you think about the ceremony? Uh, much like meeting the the human king and queen, I don't know what to think. <laughs> I don't know what I've just witnessed. How was it for you? Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty cute. You know. Should we pictures. should we try to interview the woman the, with the the king? the king? Yeah. Do you have time to talk with us? seconds but that's uh, it okay. okay i can tell you i rescued his mother from the pound when he was I, I rescued his mother from the pound when he was five days old there were five babies and uh, we neutered spayed microchipped and found homes for all the babies and he is my pet he goes with me everywhere we are from southern california he lo he loves to show he he bounces around he plays with the judges as you saw with the feather he uh, is a real ham and he thinks the world came to see him. So he was crowned, crowned he, king based he, on his personality. Yes. And the fact that he defeated 40 household pets eight times to become the highest scoring cat. Yes. Pretty incredible. It really is incredible. How do you feel? Uh, I'm a little overwhelmed because I didn't expect this, but uh, I'm real excited. And, he goes with me everywhere. He drives. He sits in front of my lap when we drive. So cute. He is a pet in the truest sense of the word. And what's his name again? Dress White. Okay, Paula, here we are at the end of the cat show. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your takeaways? I mean, I thought it was pretty incredible that we got to interview almost the entire royal family. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know how to even, to even talk to them without feeling like I was insulting their culture. I... <laughs> 
I didn't know what to do with that. I still don't know what it's about. Yeah, I guess as someone who lived in St. Paul as a child, it was such a big thing, and my my family really promoted it. Um, I have a cousin and uncle who've actually won the medallion hunt. Yeah. Um well <laughs> not feeling it it's another episode in the books we talked to a lot of people about their cats well, yeah what do you think about the cats there's a lot of nice cats here but i couldn't tell it's hard to tell the difference in quality cat to cat for me yeah trained eye yeah people think i know a lot about cats because i do a cat tour i don't know anything about cats clearly maybe you know a little bit more now like what's a takeaway uh, <laughs> like what about with the the Bengal cat? People people enjoy this. People have made it their lifestyle. Uh, there, it's a whole subculture of cat breeding that uh, I was only barely aware of. I guess I knew that people bred bred cats. Still don't know how we feel about our qualms. No, I yeah. Have we assuaged our qualms? They let us record video in here, so we're yeah. not going to have too many qualms yeah. on camera. Yeah, don't want to sure. insult the people who've let us. Uh, Thank you so kind, much. Kind Thank enough. you so much, Saint Louis City Cat Club. I don't know. I had a lot of fun. You know. And uh, it's too bad we couldn't go to the Paleo Games because I was looking forward to watching uh, Lisa Goodman and Margaret Anderson Kelleher uh, fall through the ice. As I said last week, I was hoping for that. But it got cold and the ice got firm, but it was too cold for them to hold that event. So we're it'll it'll be postponed, but I, it's not going to work out for our schedule to to do the event when it happens again. You, you'll have to check that out in person and not live vicariously through us. There are a couple of events coming up, though, that just to name, like the Luminary Loppet, February 18th on Lake of the Isles. Uh, so uh, ice skating at Powderhorn Park, are people doing that? I'm curious about that. The, the Wednesday evening uh, DJ at Powderhorn Park is still happening. I want to do, I wish we could have done that, but again, probably not going to work out with our schedule. Yeah, I think that's it. This Close is it can I, this has been another episode of the Wedge Live podcast. Okay, I'm your host, John Edwards, and who are you? The lifestyle producer, Paula Chesley. Okay. This is a real, real, real thing. Real, 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 real thing. None of you have the balls to stop. Stop this. Today. We're in the wedge neighborhood right now, 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 right now.